I thought I would share with you a day in the life of a non-fiction writer today. I've already been for a dog walk earlier this morning. I've had a rove, had my shower, had my breakfast and it is now, I can't believe it, it's nine o'clock already. Like, where has the time gone? I was on my dog walk at 6.20. It's Monday morning. Is that here? You can't see it. I've got my phone all waiting to set up to record. This is my journal. Can you see that in my phone? But I can't quite get my brain into gear. Hold on. Let me, let me have a sip of this. Let's talk about all my creative and writing projects that I've got on the go at the moment. I'm going to do a planning session I always do at the beginning of every week it's Monday today so I'm going to plan out how I would like this this week to look in terms of the projects tasks etc that I'm doing I'll also have a look at how I did last week as well because I think it's important that we look at what has what we've achieved as well as just sort of racing ahead and planning everything out now yesterday i uploaded a video onto youtube and it was a video all about how i annotated this book the success myth by emma gannon and i related it to my creative life my mindset and everything the video hasn't done very well it's had 125 views and i'm a bit gutted about that it's really, really struggling. And I was thinking about this and thinking that it makes me feel a little bit embarrassed that it's tanked so badly. But then it's there's nothing wrong with failure, is there? I was trying something. I don't know if it's worked. I want my channel to grow. I've talked about this on my Substack. I think I might have talked about this on YouTube as well. But in my Substack for paid subscribers... I did a piece on Friday all about, is it possible, basically, to make money from your online creativity? And I'm basically going to be working on my YouTube channel and intending to grow that, and also my Medium account as well, which is the writing account. I'm going to start recording on my phone. I'm going to talk you through what my plans are for the week ahead. But before we do that, this is everything that I have completed so far in September. The pink post-its are all the videos that I've done. The blue is all my substack. I introduced the book of the month, which was a success myth. I mean, this book of the month, this non-fiction book of the month thing that I'm doing on my substack and my YouTube, if people aren't enjoying it, then I won't continue with it. But maybe, maybe I picked the wrong book. It's a possibility. I've done the podcast with Claire, my Substack story. We uploaded that at the beginning of the month. I did my monthly summary. I did an article about Arnold Schwarzenegger and how he's helped me with my creative mindset i did a substack essay on the success myth and i did the one that i've already just mentioned about earning an income online and that was for my paid subscribers as well and then i have my medium i have only done a couple of articles on medium one of them must have been in august and then last week, and obviously this is the priority, and this is the one, the thing that's going to take longer, is writing or finishing editing my book proposal. So I edited chapter one, I edited chapter two last week, and I also wrote chapter three. So we'll add that in there. This is the week that I'm going to do now. That's why it's blank because I haven't done it yet. As I was writing that particular chapter, I suddenly started to think about all the other chapters in the book and I had a mild panic that they wouldn't all fit together anymore. So I've been working on this book proposal for a couple of years <laughs> Don't, don't, don't go there. It's a big mindset issue, but I am determined. I've got a couple of weeks left until the end of September. So I am determined 
to get it as finished as possible and start sending out emails to agents. Anyway, that's by the by. Because there's been a big gap between when I last worked on it, I need to go through the chapters, basically. This is how my week looked last week. And I'm just going to raise this camera up slightly so you can see more of the page. There we go. I put all the post-its from the board behind me there. The ones that I'm going to work on for the week ahead, I put in my planning notebook under the week that I'm working on. And as you can see, there's only one sticker, well, only one post-it left. And that is for a Medium article. And I said in my September Plan With Me video that I did at the end of August, that if I was struggling, Medium would be the first thing to go. And I'm not struggling, but I just, I didn't want to, I didn't have the time basically. And instead of my making myself poorly, I decided I wouldn't do it. So I'm learning basically not to overdo it. And you you can see here that I've made a note for myself about my non-fiction book proposal. That's a key important thing for me to do this week. I haven't ticked everything off. This always happens. So let's go through. So on my book, I did finish chapter three. I did edit chapter two. I haven't edited chapter three. And I haven't matched chapter examples with summaries. I think with my non-fiction book, now this is something that I'm learning and I might do a video on this, but when I'm doing a longer project, like my non-fiction book proposal, it's very easy to spend all day doing that, but I don't want to spend all day doing that because I also want to do my Substack. I also want to do my YouTube videos as well, because that's, that's part of it. And, and the book, even though it's important, I don't want it to take over my life. I need to give myself a time limit, I think. So a maximum of two hours spent on my nonfiction book proposal per day, maybe even 90 minutes. We will see. Substack did finish reading The Success Myth and I did do an essay on it. On YouTube, yeah, I did that. That's the one that bombed. And I and then broke and it wrote the script. How will this differ from the essay? Medium, I didn't do anything on that at all. Marketing, I did do a swipe through, and this is on Instagram. I did do a vertical video of last week's video. I didn't put anything on Pinterest, which I still need to do, and I only did one out of four <laughs> vertical videos, so I didn't get very far. This is what I wanted to do in the week, and then every day I would write down what I wanted to do from here on a daily basis. So let's flip the page. I'm going to put you on a time lapse now and then I will talk about it afterwards. I've planned out my week of what I would like to achieve. And it's funny, as I was doing it, I was thinking there must be more to be done than this. I haven't given myself a lot to do, but obviously that was the whole point of when I did my plan with me at the end of August. The idea was to have less per week. It's still a lot. And the book stuff, on a couple of post-its doesn't look as big as what it I think it's actually going to be anyway the idea is to reduce the amount of work so this is not a bad thing so with my book I've got sort out the chapters and edit chapter three that's a big project if I can get that done this week Oh my goodness, that would be such a big achievement my substack now you may have noticed I actually wrote some new things on post-its for both my Substack and my YouTube. And that's because I didn't want to do what I had set up. There's a essay that I want to do about the book Yellow Face, the novel Yellow Face, 
But after just doing the success myth, I wanted a break from writing about something I've pulled out of a book. So I've, I'm doing something different. Now, I've put the story of a book proposal. This is something, again, that I do for my paid subscribers. I write what's going on behind the scenes with my book proposal. And part of me was thinking, oh, Helen, it's going to be the same old thing. It's going to be you haven't finished it yet. I'm giving myself a bit of a hard time, I think, at the moment. I feel a bit down about my substack at the moment. I feel a bit frustrated with my lack of progress and I don't know if this is because I have created my goals my mini goals and I have not got anywhere close to them yet I don't know if it's because my video yesterday has tanked I don't know if it's because my son's gone to university I don't know if I've got different I've tweaked my hormonal my HRT so it could be that. But yes, I, I am feeling a little bit negative and I'm being a bit hard on myself at the moment. So there's no denying that Th these things happen. And I hope by acknowledging that, that I can be a bit kinder towards myself. We hope. The new one I did was writing doesn't always look like writing. And this is something that I wrote in my notes last week on my phone. I can't show you now because I'm obviously recording with my phone, but I will put a little screenshot here of what I wrote in my notes. And I'd like to expand on that for my Substack. I'm also going to make a note of how I'm feeling a little bit negative towards myself and my work at the moment, a little bit negative towards my Substack. I'm getting a little bit envious of other people who seem appear to be doing really well on there at the moment. So whether I might write about that as well, whether it's because there has been a number of articles out lately about people making six figures on Substack and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> nowhere near that. And it's made me feel a little bit bad because I do work hard. This is something I pulled out of Emma Gannon's book, actually. It's where you can kind of compare your hard work to other people's hard work and they're so much further ahead. They seem to be far more successful than you are. And I, I'm, I am struggling with that at the moment. My YouTube. I've decided to do two videos this week. I was watching a, a video the other day and a couple of videos the other day. And it said, if your earnings are low, then just create more. And I thought, well, one of the easiest things that I can do is filming a day in the life. And I do days in the life with my vertical videos and I really enjoy doing them. They're kind of snippets that only last about a minute. And I like putting the music to it. I'll have done all of that. You'll have seen me walking the dogs this morning and I'll have put music to it. That fills me with so much joy, being able to create something like that. So I've got two videos, the day in the life and what I've learned from one year on Substack. I may even do that video today. Put a little question mark there. So I might do that this afternoon. So medium, I've put similar to what? was on my list from last week and then marketing and miscellaneous i need to sort some of my files out some of my youtube files i need to transfer to my big storage disk i need to delete some bits from my downloads folder like my thumbnails and things like that there's no point saving them i need to put some reels on pinterest i'm going to try and do that i also need to delete some videos from my phone so I don't run out of storage. Right, okay, enough talking from me. I've probably rambled on far too much and I'm gonna to have to cut a lot of this out. That's what my day looks like. I'm going to clear my desk and then I'm gonna crack on and do my book proposal chapters. The whole time, I was tidying my desk, getting it ready to work on my proposal. Someone decided to sit here, so I couldn't, you know, quite get to my desk. <laughs> now, it's only 10 o'clock. I don't, I don't know what you're after. What are you, what are you after?
timer ran out a few minutes ago and this is where I am so far. So I've done chapter one and what I have included in the proposal. This is a summary of what I've included in the proposal of what chapter one will be about. This is what I called it in the proposal in the chapter summary section. Crack, it's complicated. This is what I've called it in the other section, the table of contents section. You'll be amazed at the amount of times that I've changed it in this one and forgot to change it in this one. So they will align. I've put what comes at the end and then this post-it is for me to fill in a summary of what is actually in the chapter that I have written and does it all align with what's there, there and there. I don't know if that makes sense and I've done the same for chapter two and it's been quite a good exercise actually. It's tedious, God it's bloody tedious but I've already realised that there are certain things that I've put within the summary in the proposal that I've actually forgotten to put in the the actual finished chapter that I was going to include at the end as my writing sample. So that's the first lot of work with the first timer and now I'm going to go and get a drink. Come on then. Right, nicely. Uh, nicely. Come here. Nicely. Okay, I've just made myself a cup of soup in my Agatha Christie mug. But I thought I would just do, I've been saving this to unbox. So I thought I would do this with you. This is something that I've been really looking forward to. And I know he gets a lot of stick online. But I just really love his books. <coughs> I re really love his books. I love, I love those sprayed edges. Let's be careful. This is a special edition from Waterstones that I got, got from their website, but it's Richard Osman's The Last Devil to Die, and it's the new Thursday Murder Club mystery, which I adore, these books. And I've got all the other ones. I think I've got them all... Just trying to find them on my bookshelf. I think I've got them all in hardback. But this is the first one I've ever got with the beautiful sprayed edges. There we have the end papers. Right, so what's the um, synopsis? Shocking news reaches the Thursday Murder Club. An old friend in the antiques business has been killed and a dangerous package he was protecting has gone missing. As the gang spring into action, they encounter art forgers, online fraudsters and drug dealers, as well as heartache close to home. With the body count rising, the package still missing and trouble firmly on their tail, has their luck finally run out? And who will be the last devil to die? <laughs> um, what was I going to say about this? Oh, I know. I want to read this this week. Next week, I am um, being interviewed on a podcast. And I want to have... Sorry, I just had to smell the book. It's got a nice smell to it. <laughs> I, do, I, I want to read this before... I am interviewed on next week's podcast. Really, really looking forward to reading this. And hopefully it will get me out of my reading slump once more. Right, okay, 
I need to turn my timer over and get back with the next 15 minute section of sorting out my non-fiction book proposal. <laughs> Final one. My timer has well it's just about to run out and I have just finished dissecting chapter four and this is what it looks like it doesn't look a lot <laughs> well at least to me because I always think I can get more done than than the reality of how long it takes to do everything but there are a few things that I discovered in doing this exercise so far firstly I've divided the book up into different parts two I had some further ideas that I wrote down on these pink post-its so I'm really pleased with that as well thirdly it's not as messed up as what I told myself in my head it does make sense it does but I told myself, and this is the ridiculousness of the situation, I told myself during my break from doing the project, from working on the project, that it was rubbish and that I'd cocked it up and that it was a mess and I wouldn't be able to get to grips with it again. Ironically, chapter four is all about procrastination <laughs> and how we put these false narratives in our heads as writers and then build up a project to be a lot scarier. <laughs> to be a lot scarier than what it actually is, which is exactly what I've done with my own project. Okay, it's the afternoon. I've had my lunch. My son, my son is currently in his first university. I don't want to say lecture because it's not a lecture. It's his first session because it's freshers week. So I'm currently wondering how he's getting on. I feel a bit wrung out, actually. I think doing that book proposal exercise and realising that it wasn't as complicated as I thought it would be, <laughs> I just feel a bit wrung out. Have I said that already? I do. I just feel... I've got now two hours until school pick up. So what I would like to do is open my journal and write down some notes on my next YouTube video, which will come out on Sunday. This one will probably come out tomorrow, Tuesday, because I'm too impatient to, to hold it for any longer than that. So I'd like to have the next one start planning that for Sunday. And I always find the hardest thing with YouTube videos is, is knowing what it's going to be about. And for the past few weeks, I have been planning them and writing the scripts. And it's made it a lot easier. It makes it a lot easier in the editing as well, because I know structurally what goes where. And then... 
I've pretty much done my day so I will have filmed this video, started working on the, the chapter structure for, for my non-fiction book, I will have created a script for my next YouTube video, 